What is going on guys, DBG here, and this is going to be another video. I made a similar video to this back in December, but in this video, I'm gonna be talking more about the way the current marketplace is and what 2K are going to be doing. So I'm going to probably, when I think it's the beginning of the end, and I've been good at predicting this. I've been good at predicting this over the last two years when it's been the beginning of the end in 2K. And last year it happened with the i think it was the march madness packs or i think they were just called madness so when the madness packs came out they started releasing ruby cards that were like freakishly good like thorough baby came out the mellow and stuff was probably better than this year's pink diamond mellow and they released a whole bunch of cards like i remember they released a leitner who was like insane and he was a 95 overall so it was just one of those ones where it was like Okay, I think this to be any of the end. And as soon as I think that's going to happen, I will make a video talking about basically just sell all your players and stuff and um, just, again, become uh, begin preparing for the apocalypse <laughs> pretty much after that. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about the best types of players to invest in. So I made a video quite a while ago, and the problem is, is that investing in cards, it's all about, like, again... Just like it with anything when you're trying to sell, if you're trying to flip anything, whether it's cards in 2K, whether you're buying, um, I don't know, whether you're buying shoes and flipping them, or whether you're flipping anything. Like, the whole thing you've gotta know is the supply and the demand. If the demand outweighs the supply, they're gonna be uh, more sought after and they're gonna be a higher price. And if the supply completely outweighs the demand, that's when you see things going on sale, that's when you see, um, things going um, into like outlets and stuff. And yeah, so pretty much what you guys are gonna want to do is have a look at cards. Well, invest in cards that you, I don't think are going to go up too much in supply. So the cards obviously you wanna not invest in are moments cards. I'm telling you right now, they are not the players to invest in, especially early because you know a lot of people are saying, Oh yeah, look at this Siakam card, but nobody's buying this card. That's the problem. So you're seeing the Siakam card that's up for like 19K. The problem is nobody buys this card. And I'm telling you this right now, no one buys it. So if you want to sell a Siakam, you're realistically going to have to sell them for about 15K because let's be real, there is a better Siakam card that is the same price. So some of these cards are really just not good investment. Like this Kyrie Irving was well over 100K at one stage. There's no point in investing in these because they don't lock in for anything. They don't lock in for anything. Moments of the week cards, again, these cards were great investments. Like, if, imagine if you picked up a Brandon Ingram. Actually, he was actually a little bit expensive when he first came out. So Kendrick Nunn is a good example. He was like 2K MT when he first came out. He's now up to like 6K MT because of his rarity. And then the week with Zach Levine. Like, if you're looking at these cards here, like 10K for him um 7k there and it's just kind of crazy like again these guys were all 1k mt and then if you're looking at this cat or Jokic is going for nothing if you're looking at donovan mitchell he's like up around 200 k 250 ish kmt because of his rarity the crazy thing is is that um what i advise you guys to invest in like the donovan mitchells of the world probably not because if you guys don't remember super packs came out and when super packs came out for moments of the weeks he was down less than 100k and to be fair any who invested down invested in him in that price you got lucky but as soon as super packs come out he's going right down in price so there's going to be a serious supply of these cards and there's a high and like when there's a much higher supply of the higher overall cards in juice super packs you're then going to see these lower overall cards that uh, go up in price but then when the higher overall cards are more expensive the lower overall cards are cheaper so it's all about again um supply and demand so do I advise you guys to invest in moments of the week? I honestly don't. I think that these guys are going to be, their prices are going to remain steady because I think at some stage we're going to get a better Levine. We already have a better Lillard. We already have a better Luka. We already have a better Trey Young. Jokic I don't think is great. And still, even with Jokic not being great, you're still paying an arm and a leg for um, Jason Tatum. And if you're looking at these 100 tokens, I think they might go up slightly when token reward cards come out, but tokens are almost worthless. The token rewards aren't great in this game, to be honest. Apart from Millsap and probably Ryder, maybe some of the Opals, they're really not great. So 
the players that I would probably advise you guys to invest in are players that you're going to you that you think are usable in game and are somewhat affordable. So while they don't lock in, I don't think it's a bad investment going for someone like a John Starks because at one stage he was like 2000 MT. While he's not going to go up too much in price, I think he is going to go up that slight bit. But again, that's only for now. These are kind of really short term ones because as soon as 2K start releasing the better and better cards, this guy goes down in price. But I can't really see him dropping below that 2K MT or any card of John Starks quality. Um, other cards are some of the spotlight cards. Like these guys are obviously going to go up in price, especially when super packs come out. So when super packs come out, what I would advise you guys to do, or when these like spotlight packs come out, buy a lot of the cheap cards. So I mean like the Landry Fields 1K MT. Like all these guys, Landry Fields and Blower 1K MT. Um, you're looking at Jason Kidd. When super packs came out or when these were new, uh, okay, do not discard. Um, you were looking at 1K MT for all these guys. And considering the fact that this card for like 600 MT, it's a very, very low risk investment invest in these kind of players. And there can be a huge, huge reward. But again, you can make mistakes. Like again, I'm a person, like I've made mistakes. My big investment was Devin Harris. And you know what? I paid 500 MT for all of him. Like Devin Harris, I don't know how there's so many of them, but like still, I paid under this card value. So that was uh, not too bad. Like it was a mistake, but wasn't a big mistake. And again, like you're not, no matter what tips I give, it's just, you just have to get lucky with investments in this game. And you have to get lucky as much as you're lucky in your time of buying, you gotta be lucky when you're selling. Selling is very few of the cards. Just like, for example, you're looking at New Year's resolutions. So you're looking at Bob Pettit right now, who's, see, he's not expensive at all. He's like 100K. Gilbert Arenas, 210 KMT. I think he actually hasn't gone, I don't actually think he's gone up in price at all. You guys are actually the same price. I'm actually kind of shocked at that. Maybe DeRozan's gone up a little bit. Um, but actually, prime example. You were picking him up for seven, 800 MT. I know he's 1300, but he's only gonna go up. The problem is, is that if they're not gonna release super packs, but if this pack goes into triple trash, you're gonna see these prices go down. So if you're investing a card purely based on rarity, you may, as soon as a super pack comes out and there's more of a supply, your investment is going to be worthless. However, the one type of player that I think is a great investment is a player you are going to use. So if you're looking at budget gods, so honestly, of all these guys, Landry Fields is the best investment. So Landry Fields right now, you're looking at him right here for, let's see, 750 empty. So he discards for 600 empty. So worst case scenario, if you buy a hundred of them, you're losing 15k empty. It's nothing. Like it is nothing if you buy a hundred Jared or Landry Fields. And look, He's already gone to 1200 MT. But the thing is, is that as soon as these packs are gonna be over, like as soon as these packs are over, people are gonna realize, people still need budget cards. There's new players coming into this game every day. And there's new players looking for budget cards every day. And where do they look for budget cards? Realistically, they look at this channel, they look at, let's be real. If you're looking for budget cards, you're looking at this channel right here. So these type of cards that you're gonna be seeing in people's budget squads like Landry Fields. Um, another player that's actually been at times a really good investment is Norman Powell because he's just fantastic. And Norman Powell's absolutely fantastic wherever he is. And especially for his price, like, yeah, I got it, he's only 2,200, but you could have easily picked him up for 750, 800 when he first came out. And these guys, again, because they're so close to this card value, like if you got him for 750 and bought 100 of them, he sells for 800. So, he actually, you made a profit, you made a 5k profit, but not a big deal. But say if you bought 100 of him for 850 MT. Worst case scenario, you lose 5k. Best case scenario, you make 1400 on every single one of them. Like, I have one Landry Fields, 750k MT, send to my auctions. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you because of how good this card is and how as soon as the packs go, the, the supply is going to get so small that I can guarantee you I can guarantee you he goes up to 2,000 MT. And it, I don't mean that as in like, he's not gonna go up to any spectacular. You're not gonna get an investment 
where you buy a card for 1 KMT and they suddenly get a 10 KMT and stay out. Like, there is no way of predicting that. Like, certain cards like Matt Barnes at times are 10 KMT, but again, you cannot predict that. Like, it is luck. There are some pure luck investments where people make millions of MT. But if you want to be as safe as possible, and especially with the way the game is going right now, because less and less people are now locking in for J.R. Smith because we have a better J.R. Smith. Less people are going to be locking in for Levine because we're getting a better Levine. Well, less people are locking for Lillard because we're getting a, we've got a better Lillard. So the fact that they're constantly releasing better and better players means people are locking in less and less collections. It's happening with current players as well. So honestly, certain times supply, um, even when the supply goes lower, the demand goes lower. So you got to basically invest in players that the demand is going to stay the same or go up. Hence, like a Landry Field type player. So really good budget players in game means that their demand is always going to be kind of high and also that you want the supply to go down. And for cards like this, there is never going to be, these are never going to be extinct. There's never going to be like a massive low amount of supply, just less supply. You just need a little bit less supply and the demand stays the same, if not goes up, if 2K stop releasing good budget players, which they might do. So these are the type of players, because if you're investing in cards just because they're going rare, the demand may drop as well as the supply. And if the demand and the supply drop, they're not gonna go up in price. So again, what I'm basically saying is, you want a card that's in demand, you want a good budget player. And again, you can make these investments on more expensive players, but I think it's much more of a risk with expensive players because they're constantly outdoing themselves. And again, when the supply, when the demand drops, even when the supply drops, nothing's gonna happen. So these budget cards, especially for how cheap they are, when they're new in packs, these cards are coming, like you can literally get these for discard value when they're in packs. So again, cards like Fields, Norma Pell, um, even Lonnie Walker to an extent where the supply is constantly going down, but the demand is high. Because if the demand is high on these type of cards, if 2K do release super packs, or if 2K re-release these packs, if the supply shoots up, because the demand is still high, you're not going to lose your MT on At worst, you're going to break even. And these are no risks. These are no risks. Like, a card like, I don't know, um, Matt Barnes, for example. Worthless in-game. Worthless. So, his demand is really low. But his supply, he's almost extinct. So... So he's worth a little bit of MT, basically, and it's only because of his rarity. But for example, if multi-dimensional packs become a daily login reward, he goes down to 1000 MT again from 10K because his demand is so low. His demand will become so low and the supply is going to shoot up. So that's basically it. So pick good players that you would want to use if you're on a budget, get them for as close as possible to discard value to minimize your risks and hold on to them for I'm not going to say hold on to them for how long because the longer you wait, the greater profit potential is, but also the longer you wait, the more likely it is the 2K release more cards in the market and raise the supply. So I'm not going to tell you guys when to sell because if I do tell you guys when to sell, everyone sells the one time and that kind of ruins the purpose of it. So make your own decision with selling, but these are the types of players you need to buy. And again, I'm not just talking about Landry Fields. There's going to be a new Landry Fields type card next week. There's going to be a new, like D Brown is another one. D Brown is going to be a really, really sought after card, and he's so cheap right now. There's going to be so many of these types of cards in the game, and these are the type of cards that I think are the safest, safest investments. But anyway, that is the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.